Hello, hello, welcome back to my channel and to another reaction video. This time we'll be checking out pitch meeting for The Last Airbender. So, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. It's based on an animated show called Avatar The Last Airbender. Oh, is it any good? People seem to love it, sir, so I figure it could be a good idea to, you know, take hours of storytelling and cram it into a 90-minute movie. <laughs> I mean, that's probably fine. Yeah, no, it's probably not a big deal. So what happens in this thing? Well, the movie takes place in a world where, like, different people and tribes can, you know, control the elements like water, air, earth, fire. Oh, how do they do that? By moving their arms around, slowly. For, for quite some time. Doesn't sound super exciting. Yeah, no, no, no. It's gonna be like watching old people do Tai Chi in the park, just really, really taking their time with it. You know, <laughs> moving their arms around, doing it real, real slow. Well, okay then. So anyway, then we're gonna meet this girl Katara and her brother Sokka or Soka or Seku or something. Oh, and what are they like? Oh, well, in the show, Sokka Soko, he's, he's a very <laughs> funny character. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're not gonna do that in the movie. Oh, we're not. No, like I said, we got a cram a bunch of episodes into a single movie, so there's no time for anyone to have, you know, personalities or, or character traits or anything. Yeah, probably not too important anyway. That's what I figured. So Katara, she can kind of water bend, right? So she accidentally drops a bunch of water on her brother. Oh, so he gets all wet? No. Oh, he doesn't? You know, a big ball of water dropped on him doesn't wet him at all. Well, we'll off to a great start so far. <laughs> Thank you. So anyway, then they stumble upon this boy that's been frozen in ice for a hundred years. His name is Ong. And you're sure that these name pronunciations are the same as they are in the show? There's literally no. no way for me to verify that. Oh, that's too bad. And so this kid, Ong, can actually bend all the elements. He's this thing called the Avatar, and he's the last airbender. That's the name of the movie. It is. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Wow. So anyway, the Fire Nation have taken over the world, right? They're like the bad guys and they run the show. Okay. And we're gonna meet this Fire Nation Prince Zuko. And he really wants to get his hands on the Avatar so he can stop being exiled. He doesn't like being exiled. Oh, not being exiled is tight. It is pretty great. So he straight up kidnaps Ong, you know? He takes him. Very rude. So obviously Katara and Sokka, they're like, we gotta go get this kid, you know? He's our responsibility. Obviously. Wait, why is that obvious? I don't know. Did they have they bonded or something? Not really, no, because there's no time. We can't we don't have time for that. <laughs> well, okay then. So then Ong manages to escape yep. and he flies away with Katara and Soka. And where do they go? Well, they fly all the way to the place where Ong is from, and when they get there, Katara's like, hey, is it okay if I ask your name? What? She just now asks him what his name is? Yeah, no, I guess she didn't ask him that when they met him or when they rescued <laughs> him or when they sense. traveled with him for I a Honestly long forgot of that time. happened. Huh. So Ong finds it's been out that all his family since I've and people have been movie. wiped out by by the Fire Nation, so he's sad for several seconds. Very emotional. And then they're gonna head over to this Earth tribe where all these people are being held captive by the Fire Nation. And they're gonna be like, hey, you guys should totally rise up. Like, that'd be that'd be great if you did that. Why hadn't they risen up before? Unclear, but Ong and Katara, they're gonna be like, you guys have Earth right under your feet. Yeah, this you didn't make any damn to, sense. To, you know, in the show, the it would make sense they because it was on that I guess water. not. Well, full disclosure, in the show, they were being held captive on the ocean, so there was yeah, no Earth for them exactly. to rise up with, but I just decided to change that. Why? Oh, I don't, I'm just kind of changing things. I don't know why. Oh, yeah, I mean, sure, have fun with it, you know? So then there's gonna be this really intense moment where six Earth people, they come walking out and they're doing like this <laughs> haka dance thing. Oh boy, I bet they're gonna bend a lot of Earth with that, huh? <laughs> Not really, no. Oh, you know, they're gonna do that big dance and it's just gonna, it's gonna kind of raise a single rock and they're gonna throw that at one guy. They're it's out of kind practice. Of exciting, I guess. No, no, not really. Oh, okay, too bad. And so then Ong admits that he doesn't really know how to bend anything other than air, so they need to find him some teachers. Okay. So they head towards the Northern Water Tribe, and along the way, they free a bunch of other villages. Well, well, that's gonna be fun to see. No, 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 we're not really gonna see any of that. Oh, we're not. Yeah, no, we gotta keep going with the story. So we're gonna say most of the interesting stuff in, like, a voiceover. Is that the, is that the best way to tell a story? Oh, well, I'm just following the first rule of screenwriting, sir. Tell, don't show. Oh, I think you got that backwards. No, I don't think so. It's like they say, you know, a thousand pictures are worth a single word. That's also the opposite of the real one. Well, disagree to agree. I guess. That's all. Okay, yeah, sure. So anyway, <laughs> eventually they get to the Northern Water Tribe and they meet a bunch of waterbenders and Princess Penis Hair. What? And her and Sackboy, <laughs> they fall in love right away, you know? So they're, they're, they're in love now. <laughs> what makes them fall in love? The fact that we're gonna say that they're in love now in a voiceover narration. And you're sure we shouldn't be showing these moments instead of dumping them out in voiceover? Absolutely I am. Well, okay then. Screenwriter guy and producer guy became great yeah. friends during this conversation. They went on to fight many battles together and win several 
several wars. Of course, this had always been the prophecy. You see, when producer guy was a young child, he was told that he was the chosen one, like Neo in the <laughs> Matrix. But because of a leather allergy, he didn't think he could live up to those high expectations, and he ran away to Hollywood. Also later, he and screenwriter guy would both become president of the United States. Together, they both, they, they shared the job, like a tag team of presidents, one of which could not wear leather. And when aliens invaded, everyone was very grateful to have producer guy and screenwriter guy as co-presidents of the United States. Also, the building that they're in okay. right now during this conversation <laughs> is on fire, but they're gonna get out of it just fine. Don't even, don't even worry about it. Anyway, so then the Fire Nation, they attack the Water Kingdom. Oh no. Yeah, and this bad guy from the Fire Kingdom, he's gonna kill a fish, which is actually the Moon Spirit, which is actually where the water people get their power. Oh, I mean... Okay. Yeah, don't worry, it's all gonna be very clear to the audience, because we're gonna explain it verbally, out loud, with words. A whole lot of exposition. So then the princess, I mean, if she's gonna give her life to the fish, because one time the moon on. spirit gave her life, and so it's like, yeah, okay, let's, you know, let's do that. Oh, well, great, I guess, you know, I feel absolutely nothing. Well, that's fine, I mean, we don't really have time to make people feel things here. Shouldn't we try to make people feel things, though? Isn't that what movies are all about? Actually, no. Oh, okay, my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is it gonna be tough for them to beat the Fire Nation? Actually, it's gonna be super easy, barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yes, yeah, see, Ong makes a really, really big wave and everybody sees it and they're like, oh, okay, yeah, no, let's stop fighting now. Oh, well, great. Yeah, it all works out. So how does the movie end? Well, the leader of the Fire Nation, he's gonna turn to his daughter and be like, hey, you better, you, you gotta get ready for the sequel, okay? Oh, he has a daughter. She yeah, did have a creepy smile. We're barely gonna mention her in the movie, but we're gonna show her for a second at the end and that's really gonna tease the sequel. And you're sure this is gonna be popular enough for people to want more movies, you know, this adaptation? with all the stuff removed. I mean, people love cheese and shredded cheese, so. I mean, what are you trying to say? I'm saying as far as I can tell, people don't mind if you take something they love and, you know, tear it to pieces. Uh, you know what? That does sound like it makes sense. Let's do it. Yeah. This movie sucked, but, I mean, there were a few good things. I mean, uh, yeah, the actor who played Iroh did his best. He's also... I believe the actor who from the first Iron Man movie, Jensen, who saved Tony Stark in the cave. But yeah. And I mean, visually, the uh, M. Night Shyamalan did manage to bring uh, the world of uh, The Last Airbender to the screen, but the story was garbage, and a lot of the acting was really, really wooden. They really chose for actors for this. But yeah. I believe the actress who played uh, Princess, the Moon Princess, <laughs> or Penis Hair, as Ryan mentioned, she, is, uh, she voices Asami in the um, Legend of Korra. And yeah, I really edit the uh, voiceover narration. I mean, that's the problem when you shoot on hours of stuff into a one movie. You have to cut away something, but <laughs> a lot of cool stuff uh, were cut down. And yeah, at the end, I'm gonna lie, they, when, uh, at the end of the movie, they reached the Southern Water Tribe. That was an amazing place. They, they did, I mean, uh, I said it before, Shyamalan did a good job bringing the world. I mean, the, the set pieces were great and the special effects to mo most, for the most part, looked really good. And yeah, even though, I think everyone was waiting for the giant water spirit, or water moon, whatever, and transform into uh, to appear at the end and take out General Zhao. And but yeah, we, instead we got got a giant wave, and visually it did look really good. But yeah, here we are. Moment. Uh, uh, I think um, the Netflix's version of. The last airbender is airing in a few months or so. I, for, I, I forgot exactly when. Was it March or? But anyway, I reacted to the trailer and that looked really, really good. So here's hoping they follow there. Uh, I mean, if you've seen Netflix's One Piece, they did a really good job there adapting that. So uh, hopefully Netflix will keep the ball rolling. Uh, ruling but yeah but anyway what do you guys think about the touch down below 
Hope you enjoyed my reaction. Don't forget to like, subscribe if you want to know what's in another video.